I am Harry Konomi and I am an actor. Out of the night that covers me, black as the pit from pole to pole, I thank whatever gods may be for my unconquerable soul. In the fell clutch of circumstance I have not winced nor cried aloud. Under the bludgeonings of chance my head is bloody but unbowed. Beyond this place of wrath and tears looms the horror of the shade. And yet the menace of the years finds and shall find me unafraid. It matters not how straight the gate, how charged with punishments the scroll. I am the master of my fate. I am the captain of my soul. Beautiful. <laughs> now one more take. We need that in a close-up. Yeah. <laughs> and watch the eye line. Yes. So, yes. I that's good. Look at the camera. That's good. Yeah. I'm uh, Jeff Stone. I'm a director. And uh, I guess for the last eight years or so, that as long as we've been here, we've been making short films at GBC. Um, that's kind of ever since I was a student, I came to Goldie Beacom. That was what I wanted to do. Um, right before I came here, I worked on a film called Kickback uh, and took six months. It was a 20 minute short. It sucks, <laughs> no. but it is the heart of everything, um, you know, I've tried to do. So a voice lightning studio was birthed from that, trying to recreate the magic of making a film with your friends together. And so today is kind of a different one because it's going to be about our journey and the films we've made together um, yeah. at Goldie Beacom, which is so weird because people mention all the time it's a business school, but many uh, short films have been made here and and um, a lot of people have come through and taken part in our dream and their dream and gone on to do other things as well. So we're just going to go through and just talk about the films we've done. I created a playlist on the Goldie Beacom YouTube channel that's films shot at GBC um, by us, by me. Um, some of those are documentaries, which we've talked about, so we're going to la leave the documentaries out. Just focus on the narrative films because that's that's what the goal has always been, to, yeah. to tell stories and, and connect with an audience in that way. Um, so everything that I've done, every video um, project, even photography, has been a chance to get behind a camera and direct something or tell some type of story. Um, and it always, you know, I've watched a ton of Film Riot, and the advice has always been to make something, add a tool to the tool belt, learn to make something even better, and then keep going. And so, <clears throat> um, so but specifically, Hari and I have like an, a, a funny actor-director relationship, which I think will be really interesting to get in because hopefully Hari will be honest on the show <laughs> today and talk about the experience yes, of, course. of working with his pain-in-the-ass director friend. Uh, but, um, but yeah, so it really has culminated in us recently trying to build momentum in a feature film that we hope to make called The Missing Million. So we'll get into those things because those are the most recent, but those will be at the end. So um, all of these short films that we're going to talk about are on my YouTube channel. Um, you can find that on the Goldie Beacom one as well, or my Instagram, or Hari's got them linked in, in his bio as well. Um, but let's start all the way at the beginning, uh, mm. which was um, No Glove, No Love, 2018, mm. for the Washington, D.C. 48-hour film project. Yeah. It was bringing my kickback crew up to Goldie Beacom to work with the newly formed Lightning Studio and the goal behind it was to, you, you're like, behind the 48-hour film project, you write, shoot, and edit a film in 48 hours. A short film, under seven minutes. And a funny backstory behind that is um, <laughs> uh, our, my co-writer, good friend Steven, mm -hmm. um, who's written many of the films we'll talk about with me and, and alone and, and with others, um, he jokes that that was a script battle because mm -hmm. we didn't really kind of figure out exactly who was going to be the writer. Mm -hmm. So Goldie people came up with an idea. It, we had to drive to D.C. to pick up the information. So we started figuring out what's going to be the idea. And then you literally have to write a couple-page script before you do it. Mm -hmm. um, so Goldie people pe came up with an idea, and then we came up with an idea, and everybody got in the old Wimberley room, and we, used to, we argued <laughs> whose idea we were going to go with. And then at one point, I was just like, everybody go to sleep. <laughs> it's like midnight. We hadn't started writing it. I was like, everybody go to sleep. We're going to go figure out what we're going to do. And um, mm -hmm. eventually turned into No Glove, No Love, which um, they do like different awards. And that one, best use of prop. We had a glove that talked. It was my 5% compatibility. Good friend and editor, um, co-director on Kickback, Dylan, mm. taught me uh, how to make films. And he was the voice of the glove and also the editor of that. But um, 
that's also a great behind the scenes video that Senny did mm -hmm. as well about that film. But yeah. Um, but yeah, that one was an interesting one. Yeah. I remember watching it. Um, I don't know if it was at the screening at. Um, I remember, but I remember watching it and I saw Cody, I saw Jess, Elijah, and it all all seemed so like cool, you know, to be a part of. It was obviously the actual thing I felt I thought was smart. With it was like a spin on dating and on online dating and how it could be in the future, yeah, uh, and how wrong or right it can be, but. Uh, just that kind of, and I think that was one of the first ones that I saw of uh, Lightning Studio when I was here, and kind of from afar was like, oh, that's that's a cool thing. I would like to get involved with that. But back then I was just, you know, I was a, a different guy. <laughs> I was just, you know, focused on soccer. Long hair, Hari. Long hair, Hari to here probably. Uh, yeah. Yeah, we all went multiple times because we got voted to go to the best of screening so yeah, we yeah. all went multiple times all the way to dc together yeah. i know. remember seeing the pictures yeah, yeah. like I, me and senny have like an infamous photo before we started dating of us yeah. together like literally i think it was like a month before we started dating um we have a couple of great photos <laughs> there yeah one ca like candid one that somebody took off off guard and then mm. one together where there's two versions of it there's one it's the same photo but there's like a outlet on the wall that was removed because that was when yeah <laughs> yeah it was like yeah when i posted that as my profile picture people were like oh Jeff, no. <laughs> doing something right something's changed in his life um yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, and so that, so following up like that was a good blend between lightning studio and kickback and yeah. i think total total i've done about 19 short films we've got another one on the way but uh um, the next one was Assimilation, which was like kind of like my senior project. I co-wrote it with mm. Aaron Easter, who was in the English uh, program here and a good friend of mine. And then I got Joel in it. Yeah, yeah. Shelby, Dre, yeah. you know, Elijah, Elijah yeah. the whole crew. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, that was kind of like my first time kind of coming out and doing stuff mm. without the kickback crew. I really mm. wanted to, you know, to like, it was like a Goldie Beacom horror film. Mm. It was interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I remember watching a simulation. It was like I was like, "Oh, this like we can do stuff like this here," you know. Um, but then uh, it also seemed like, "Oh, I, I I probably never gonna be part of this stuff <laughs> because it's it, it, even though like it was at school, it still seemed very specialized, it still seemed you yeah. know, kind of out of reach. But you guys were always around, and and it was cool to see. You know, I think I mentioned at uh, a previous episode that uh, the first. Thing I remember at all from Lightning Studio was uh, somebody dropping the or Elijah I think dropping the TVs from yeah. uh, from Jackson or Miller maybe it was but yeah, um, yeah man these That's short films are building blocks essentially yeah. so these were a couple without Hari but yeah. we're gonna get into the ones with Hari because Hari has recently become my Robert De Niro you know <laughs> my uh, Killian Murphy dude yeah yeah but my most uh, casted actor yeah. mainly because I'm just here. <laughs> I'm just around, you know. Yeah, you, uh, you know. a lot more than that. Right, right place, right time. You want You really ha are passionate about it. and You want to oh, do yeah, it. But yeah. one more quick note about assimilation. Mm -hmm. um, I never forget. We were trying to get the gimbal to work mm -hmm. before the sun was com coming up, mm -hmm. in the final shot where Elijah and and um, Dre. Dre had Dre. become the zombies and. Mm. Uh, I don't know what they were at that point, but uh, I remember we barely did it. Like we got the shot with like 10 minutes ago, the sun's mm -hmm. coming up and Shelby is like, um, I'm never doing this again. Like this is miserable. <laughs> never doing this again. And I will say that was 2019 mm -hmm. and we did a short film. Shelby was in it in 2023. So, <laughs> yeah. you know, there's like some type of amnesia involved in making a film where like yep. it's, it is uh, <laughs> it is really rough when you do it, but then you forget and you you come back. You to come it. back, you know. <laughs> um, and her dad was in that recent one, which yes. we'll get to. Yeah, one one more quick note mm -hmm. about um, assimilation was that Joel Warden did the opening monologue, mm -hmm. the opening voiceover, and I remember putting him in the credits as Doctor Joel Warden, and he was like, "What do you? You don't have to call me Doctor <laughs> Joel Warden there." But um, but I remember going yeah. up to the classroom to record that that voiceover but uh but yeah so the next one um which kind of planted the seeds for the missing million the uh, like a neo-noir that could be shot at a college and 
things it was inspired by one of my favorite movies brick uh so much so that we named it stash yeah and it was hari's first yes first film so yeah. that was another blend between the kickback crew coming from maryland up here yeah. and working with lightning studio yeah it did feel quite like uh, a larger thing you know because it was people i didn't know for meet for the first time and it's like oh okay you know let's do this thing and how did you end up landing this role? Because I didn't know you were going to be uh, one of the actors till a couple of days ago. How would this come across? Uh, you know, when an opportunity comes, you say yes, you yes. grab it, and then you just go for it. You know? Did Jeff just ask you, or like, Jeff how did put a gun to my head? And oh. he said, no, 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 of course not. <laughs> I, I wanted, I told him I wanted to help out, and uh, he was kind enough to give me a role. Oh. Um, it was really cool for me. It was the first real time like doing some actual like acting, and I remember uh, me, Giselle, and Steven were kind of going through the dialogue scenes that we were gonna shoot, and I, I, uh, Steven said basically that like actors who well new actors, people who don't know, who don't have experience, they kind of read it and they're waiting for the other person to say the, the, their line and then they kind of go into it, they say the line and then they kind of back up again because they're waiting so they're not like in character the whole time. I didn't know what he was talking about <laughs> but then we did the scene again and I was like, oh, I definitely did that <laughs> because I was just waiting for, I was so happy to say the line, I was just waiting for Giselle to be done and be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. and then I <laughs> yeah. Um, but a staple yeah. of noir films is cigarettes. Yeah. Oh. And yeah. so, but like, let's yeah. So like, yeah. W people were saying like, "Oh, Harry doesn't know how to smoke a cigarette." I don't know. <laughs> but I just like, I guess I see it. But uh, yeah. but yeah. What well, well, was? Have you learned since then? Um, no, no. I don't. <laughs> I still don't know how to. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it was weird because I I never did it before. Uh, before that, uh, that scene that we had to shoot, and I think Sandy actually pointed out that. Um, how are you like you bring it to, to, too many times the to take a puff <laughs> or, or you, you know, and it like didn't look natural. And I guess, you know, I didn't, I had no idea. But um, funny thing is I showed the short film, I showed Stash to one of my friends back in Sweden. And when I showed him like, you know, the first scene of the, with the cigarette thing, he was like, yeah, you know how to smoke. Because it looked like, I guess in the finished product that, you know. That, yeah, it, you that's know, the thing. Some people pointed out and they were like, it doesn't look like he knows. And I was like, Hmm. I don't see it. I don't really, yeah. you know. Um, I guess maybe I just was, because I was trying to memorize the lines and remember to like, okay, say the first line and then take yeah. a puff, put it down, listen to her, react to what you, she's saying. And also, you were dealing with an amateur director at the time, so you probably had to smoke, <laughs> what, 15 cigarettes? <coughs> <laughs> <coughs> uh, no, no, it was uh, one, one cigarette. <laughs> but also, it was a couple different. Yeah, what I really like about that scene too is behind Giselle, that shot in the background, you can see the... Um, the foundation of Franta. Yeah. You could see it being like, you could see the five or six floors or whatever. And then mm. you could just the, it's not done yet. It's just yeah. the scaffolding or the whatever. I don't know any of those construction terms. Construction terms. But, um, but yeah, a little side note about that too, which is funny that we're talking about this right now uh, is I remember like we had a lot of people involved in some of these films yeah. we've been able to do with literally us three. I mean, I'm sure we've done a couple with just literally three or four people, but yeah. some of these bigger ones, like that was for the 72 hour film yeah. project. We had like 15, 20 people. Yeah. And so you have catering involved. Mm -hmm. And, um, I remember reaching out ahead of time, you know, pretending like I know what I'm doing and I'm like, we need to find out if anybody has allergies. Right. So we reach out to everybody and, um, someone's like, I got a peanut allergy. And we're like, okay, for food, we won't, we're going to do like salad and pizza for lunch. Mm -hmm. And we were getting Chipotle catered or we, yeah. salad and pizza for dinner. Chipotle was catered for lunch. Mm -hmm. And I'm well, there's no peanuts in that. We're good or no nuts. Mm -hmm. And our gaffer, Jeremy shows up with some almonds <laughs> and or something. And so in the, in the early production meeting, mm -hmm. we had this freshman who uh, just like, yeah, she's okay, but she had to <laughs> bow out. And I'm like, I remember people were like, it wasn't an emergency. Yeah. I think. I mean, maybe if Hopefully. it was, it wasn't. It didn't make it to me. But I remember being like, um, I can't believe I'm about to say this. But I remember being like, we got to get the first set up. I can't worry about this right now. I don't know who's going through what. Whatever. Oh, uh, my God. But, yeah, she survived. Um, yeah, that's good. Yeah, but she did not make it to, to set. Uh, oh. <laughs> so then, um, and that was when I was like, you know, not very important, but whatever. We'll get, get right to the next thing. Um, so then COVID hit and we weren't really able, because that was the end of 2019. We weren't really able to do films under mm -hmm. COVID. Um, this one wasn't shot on campus, but it's one of my favorites. 
Um, so I wanted to bring it up. I did a film called Places We Love Can Never Leave with Senya. Um, and it's kind of the uh, culmination of an idea I always wanted to do with international students in at Goldie, because so many international students have come through here and the same theme about missing home. And um, so the idea behind that, it, it was really cool because it was almost co-directed by us because Senya had to, her dad did the voiceover. Yeah. Um, and, and so that was inspired by one of my favorite films, Pan's Labyrinth, mm -hmm. kind of like a, sort of like a fairy tale voiceover. And mm -hmm. so she had to direct her dad doing it. Then her mom made it in some of the shots because there's footage from Serbia and footage mm -hmm. from, from America. And, uh, and that one still sticks out as like yeah. my favorite because it's, you know, just touch tapping into, I don't know what it, what it feels like, but you know, the feeling mm -hmm. of nostalgia and, um, and yeah. yeah. So yes, that did a great job on the on the, yeah. on the thing. It was good because I remember watching it and I remember the sound of the teapot getting ready or, and it was. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I think all internationals probably. And I mean, in general, people just who just miss home or miss family. It's definitely a very something that you can really relate to when you see it and you hear it as well because the, the sound and hearing Senya's dad speak Serbian was icing on the cake face. Yeah. And it was kind of like a classic Jeff move, too, to expect someone to be able to paint. Like, I didn't know she could actually do something good. Like, let me rephrase <laughs> that. I didn't know, whoa, whoa, I didn't know pause. she could actually paint well. Like, painting is a weird thing to be like, um, you know, hey, come paint something. Yeah. If, I'd have never seen her really paint. So I'm not, I'm not like, I don't, I was expecting it to be like, it actually yeah. turned out really nice. And I, and I was like, Oh wow, that's actually really good. And it's in your apartment now, right? Yeah. It's hanging up. Yeah. Of course. And yeah. the, the poster and things. Um, yeah, I'm sorry. No, she does a lot of things really well. Like she's a professional photographer. Yes. So, um, you know, puts up with me too. So, uh, um, that's the best thing. Yeah. <laughs> that is the most difficult. Um, mm. So, uh, so now back to the film shot at GBC. Um, uh, so then at, at a certain point we started to try to do like shorts that were one scene mm. because I remember like a lot of my shorts early on were, you know, like 10 to 20 minutes, multiple scenes. And, you know, you're trying to tell like a feature film length story, like an hour and a half long story mm. in a short film. It, that short films aren't like that. Like I think advice I heard around that time was that like, Short films are like the poems or the songs for the filmmaker. Mm. It's it can't really be a full story. So I started to practice how to like do like one scenes, mm -hmm. one scene short films. <laughs> one of the first ones was our Halloween short, mm. where where you played the guy in my old office, mm -hmm. and um, that's almost no dialogue. There's like dialogue, but we didn't really get it. Yeah, I mean, it was uh, supposed to be like a guy working late, you know, he's working in his office and the, you know, I, I mean, I'm scared of the dark. I don't, I'm not afraid to admit it, uh, but uh, it was cool to do it because it was simple in execution, I suppose, at least for me, I didn't have to say too many things. Uh, it was more to kind of show or like go through the emotional thing that he would go through, like being tired at work, you know, trying to type up stuff and then but it was cool because we had jeremy over as well senya played yeah. the monster yeah you know? senya played the monster <laughs> so it was cool yeah really cool i yeah. remember there was a good tiktok that yeah you and dre filmed that mm. was like where you had the mask and the bat and uh yeah, yeah. that was good yeah that bat was legit yeah like, it was not a real bat but that would hurt if yeah <laughs> we have it it's in here somewhere oh yeah yeah we senny's do, yeah. gonna grab it right now we can show people um <laughs> as well we have the mask somewhere yeah um, I'm sure. But, uh, so, yeah, she grabs that. It's got, like, check this out. It's got, like, the blood stains on yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know? It's kind of oh, like yeah. a... Full-on Jason Voorhees. Yeah, look mm -hmm. at that. Um, <laughs> it's still got these zip ties on it. <laughs> but, yeah, and then the mask was pretty freaky, too. Yeah. But that was inspired, again, by, like, you know, we really, like, taught ourselves how to make films here, you know? Yeah. Learning from YouTube, learning from, you know, that, I think that was at a point where I was like, all right, let me try try to stop telling completely original stories and start mm. trying to emulate some of the things I've seen because that's imitation is kind of one way to really learn how to do something. So that's what I try to do is emulate mm. some things I saw. Very simple. Um, and then we did a couple more, which I'll get to in a second. Um, but uh, I guess we did two back-to-back -back 
more of those competitions. We did another 72 hour film project um, and then a 48, but the 72 was up the ladder. Yeah. And I wanted to mention that one because uh, we filmed the main scene of that in the college's like main boardroom, the Boggs boardroom. The official, yeah. the yeah. official room. <laughs> Back when we had like the David L. Barnes Council, which mm -hmm. was like a, sort of almost like the, like the leadership council at the college, mm -hmm. I used to push to have our meetings in there, you know, and they let us a couple of times and then they kicked us to the third floor of <laughs> Fulmer. But, uh, because it was mm -hmm. just, it's so, it's like almost like a little room out of the sixties or seventies, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Um, and Big so chairs. that, yeah. the chairs, uh, the walls it's just very and then so it had that bit has the big window on the side and so mm -hmm. we treated it like it was the interview room before you get to heaven mm -hmm. and yes. Hari played two characters in that and one of them was did, yeah. the, the advisor uh, the a guy that interviews you to see if you get a second chance at life or not yeah. yes that is true uh it was weird <laughs> because i mean it was really cool to be honest uh because playing the two guys i didn't think i could do it but it was also a good opportunity to, to really try to, at the same time, yes, play to different people, but also connect them in some sense. Because um, I remember reading this, uh, this um, like a preface of a play, and the preface of the play said that every man is a variation of yourself, you know, to always like remember that and to keep that in mind. And, and so I kind of treated it as like, okay, this guy, the, the first guy, the DJ Nolan, that has his big idea, he's so enthusiastic and he wants to, you know, change the world or whatever with his idea and he believes so much in it, you know. And then the other guy is kind of, kind of like cynical a little bit. He's, he's cynical, but he's, at the same time he's honest, you know, because he pushes in to, to, uh, to Cody's character, to Daniel, and says, what are you doing with your life? But in, in, in some sense, it was almost as if he was really saying that to the DJ as well. Or at least in my mind, <laughs> it yeah. was. Um, so because the DJ wanted to do something, he did. Yes, you know. And he then did. and then the Cody character, the the banker, then, was like not really catching that. Just seeing the money. Yeah. Not really seeing the passion and the. Yeah. You know, and then he kind of. Yeah. yeah. So didn't you have a mustache in the beginning and then shave it? For yeah, the, yeah, yeah. Because we were like, we were like, <laughs> I loved that idea of having you play two characters. Yeah. But we were like, how can we distinguish them? So you had yeah. like a do rag and a mustache in the yeah. first. Uh huh. Because we were trying to like get the DJ look or <laughs> or whatever that means. You know, I guess people can look the same. But we were just, I guess, trying to differentiate from how this guy would look and the other guy would look. Um, and yeah, I just went to my dorm. Shaved it real quick, came back, and I was like, all right, I'm ready to, ready to go, ready to roll. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. That was one of the first ones where we really got to see you, at, like, acting. Like, I think yeah. Stash was, like, your first chance. You were really just mm. thrown into it. And a lot of the role was yeah. on, like, facial expressions. And, yeah. and, and like, this, it was, like, plot was carrying the movie. And the main character was, yeah. like, Giselle. Mm -hmm. But this one was, like... We got to see the range of who Hari is. Like the DJ is very passionate, yeah. Hari very pitching Hari -like. ideas, yeah. and then the advisor was very. When Hari turns into the uh, philosopher, yeah, of uh, you know whom yeah. well, in Greece what, we don't. Yeah, back home in Greece, uh, we don't really let this guy come back from uh, from the interview room. Um, yes, but yes. Um, the next one was where I really saw something like, you know, of course you 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 know, are like incredibly talented, you know, but the next one was really, I saw that you, it, well, acting wasn't just like a, to be a part of the projects for you. Mm -hmm. It was something that I saw you really wanted to do. And it was, and that was, um, oh no, one real, one more thing about, um, one more thing about uh, Up the Ladder that I want to mention, because I think it's hilarious that mm -hmm. nobody has caught unless I've told you, I swear. Oh yeah. yeah. Nobody has caught say. unless I I've, about, yeah. I've, unless I've said to this. So, we filmed this all on a day, and then we had to get some leftover shots the next day. Mm. And one of the shots was the character eating a sandwich in a park. I remember but this. We were so stupid that we forgot to make the sandwich. And so we got, we showed up at the location, we parked, and we were like, what is he going to, like, we don't have the sandwich. What is he going to do? Just sit there on his lunch break and, like, take in the scene? Mm. And I was like, well, maybe if we film it from a certain angle and a direction, you could pick up that brown leaf there. And like take a bite out of it, and it'll look like a sandwich. So in that shot where he's eating the sandwich and he's holding it like a sandwich, <laughs> it is a freaking tree leaf. 
Yep. Um, and nobody knows. Yeah, it's <laughs> beautiful. Notice. You can't tell. I mean, no, you did a good job. Yeah. Well. No, oh, that yeah, yeah. is one of my favorites. So then the next one is um, how to break a leg. How to break a leg. Yeah. So that's where I really saw, you know, <laughs> like, because it, it was weird. Like, I remember we had, we were going to like, yeah, you go in the backstory about the writing of that. <laughs> 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 it was a 48 hour film project. So yeah. we had a small crew. We just like about to do it over the weekend. But yeah, yeah. go ahead. And so we write it. We feel okay about it, you know. Uh, we bonded over like storytelling and the Greek mythology with Joe, and uh, <laughs> yeah, seriously. Um, and then yeah, we wake up the next day, and I remember it felt like the the night felt very slow paced, you know, because we were writing, so it takes time. And uh, and then in the the morning felt very fast paced because I remember getting a call from you like, all right, we gotta change this thing. <laughs> and I was like, all right, no problem. But I was worried that maybe we would change it too much, or you know. But the essence of it was still there, you know the 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 idea of the two actors kind of auditioning for something and uh, yeah it was it was really fun because we came in and we did it in the bathroom like right out here actually yeah. um and um yeah i was struggling to remember the lines and and adrian was there as well and Aaron easter came by yeah and it was and it was true really yeah so yeah. we didn't have we couldn't have our gaffer jeremy there yeah, so and we were doing it with a small crew and so yeah. You know, that bathroom on the in the second floor of the annex has the giant diffused windows. Mm. So I knew that um, if we just threw one of these soft boxes up over, match the color temperature, we wouldn't have to do much lighting. It yeah. didn't need much dramatic lighting either. So it's something like, you know, you can always blend your story to fit your mm. your budgets. But, you know, you were saying that you were like forgetting the lines, but that was mm. the essence of the thing. The is you had Adrian, who was at the time a more experienced actor playing... Mm the guy who's like comes with it with a little bit more talent mm. um, and can follow, can read a script. Cause my limited knowledge of acting is, you know, you get the script and then, you know, the actor studies it, mm. tries to understand the essence of it yeah. and, you know, deliver the lines Del in the way that you, you know, yeah. feeling it, the character supposed to feel it. Mm. Um, but I know that with somebody who's kind of relatively new, which you were at the time, mm. You know, Still am. yeah, Still you am can get the essence, but you can't always remember the lines. Yeah. But people sometimes when you're so you guys were like, all, you were playing characters who are auditioning for mm. a role. Sometimes when you go in and you audition, they want to hear the lines they wrote with the emotional yeah. heart that they wrote them with. Yeah. You know, but you were you brought something different. So like go into that because I, I, I always liked loved how that turned out almost like an like a art imitates life in a yeah. way. Well. Uh, there's all, all these like actors like Hollywood A-listers they will say usually like the advice they give to young actors is learn the lines because the lines will enable you to then do the emotional stuff because if you don't know the lines you can't really do the emotion even if you understand it that's all well and good but without the lines you have no you know you have no surfboard to surf the the wave let's say right so so for me the whole experience of shooting that one was like learning how to actually you know read it learn the lines and then if you do learn the lines then you can actually deliver something but uh the character that i played was uh, an actor who kind of was a bit naive and romanticized the idea of acting and uh had this thing of like well i want to do something that feels real you know it was all about the emotional thing which i guess is kind of part of uh, the the polaroids uh, as well which like it's that emotional connection and that's great but without the tools you can't really deliver the emotional connection all the way through and i remember that even in the shot when we were shooting it i forgot a line said oh my god and then came back and did it again and we kept that in the or you kept that in the final thing because it fit the character it was real it was real yeah you want to learn how to use it's okay keep it going okay is that a crab mallet in your hand? And he he forgot, you know. He I forgot, so so he forgot, uh, and then and then had to do it again. And then he was battling the the kind of the because the, the the thing that they were auditioning for was the let's say the Jake State Farm role where you deliver uh, the lines in a very and this tone and you mm -hmm. have to be professional and you and there's a science and 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 a very like. Um, there's a very deliberate way to do that and you have to be very good at doing it. Uh, but my character kind of wanted to, to make it more real and relatable and kind of toned down. So then we go into the close-up 
and that's when I deliver it how I would like to deliver it, which keeps the essence, but doesn't necessarily has the same lines that were on the script. Yeah. And that clash with Adrian's character, where he's like, listen, this is a job, you have to be professional. Yes, there is art to it, yes, there is this, but without the professionalism, then, you, then, then you're just an amateur. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and the, the contrast was professional slash uh, compared to amateur and yeah. how you can get from one to the other, but, with, uh, but hopefully without losing the enthusiasm and the, the, um, the I guess, naive nature of yeah. the amateur, and, and, but getting the tools to be able to be professional. And, and that's something that my father tells me all the time, you know, whether it's about photography or acting or, or any other things that I'm, 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 or drawing, things that I'm interested in, right? Um, you can't get to mastery or you can't get to the to the real high level without the tools all the energy all the supposed talent because my father says talent doesn't really exist it's more it's you develop it you know what i mean it it can be you are you you can be a you can have some sort of you know you can be a savant you can have some sort of a gift but if it's not developed if it's not cultivated it will never really become something more yeah. you know uh, I look at like Johnny Depp and I'm like, wow, this guy is so natural. This guy is so, you know, just effortless. But the truth is that he has that given to him. But he also, as soon as he was, you know, w he says it as somebody put the ball in my hands and I ran with it. If he didn't run with it, which yeah. means the, the hard work of reading, uh, reading, uh, understanding scripts, understanding stories, he, you know, then you can't really run. Yeah, it's like you need to learn the rules. So, so then you, you can, can break them. Yeah, so then you can break them. Yeah. And it, it's interesting, like, hearing you talk about it. It's like that's, you know, like, I know we mentioned on the last podcast, um, talking with Seb about, you know, my journey as a filmmaker, learning that um, it's not just about making something or just saying something. It's about what you're saying and how you're saying it. Um, this was kind of the first one where I really started to deal with that existential, you know, feeling of, like, Am I just making movies to make movies because I want to be a filmmaker or, or is there something within myself that I really want to say? Mm. Um, you know, and this was the first one that almost like had something to say because yeah. it is a commentary on what, on the system, yeah. you know, like the acting system, like auditioning itself. Like there's a great Ryan Gosling monologue that he oh, talks yeah. about, like just the st maybe we'll even insert that in here, but yeah. uh, definitely link to it. But um, and then they used it in La La Land. Yeah. Basically, he told it to Damon Chazelle, and they mm -hmm. used it in La La Land. Um, but, but like it, it was, it's, yeah, it was. That's a, it's a, it was a good one. What, where along the lines? Because one of the things I want to ask you and talk to you, I guess we can do it along the lines. Uh, along, <laughs> I forgot. No, 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 no. no where along the line? Because like, okay, that was. Mm. Then we did a run of short films. Mm. Um, one minute shorts where well, either you were the main character like we did um uh the missing million short mm -hmm. of um james and jer, james and jer which yeah. now it's james and vince yeah. um and then we and then we filmed that in my old office as well mm -hmm. old office area we did uh, uh which was inspired by the missing million characters um and that dynamic mm -hmm. and uh that's like uh continues to like build that was so good to like learn more about them mm -hmm. and then we did um the edible gummies yeah. <laughs> where that's also kind of relatively inspired by the missing million characters mm -hmm. too and just that world just like kind of like we have this i had this script this feature script and then we're just testing out little you know shorts learning as well as yeah. cinematography and things um and then we did we'll, we'll get into volt next actually because then it will separate those but mm -hmm. With all these, where along the lines, even the 48s and the 72s and all of your films up to that point, mm. um, how has it been working with me? I really want to get <laughs> the truth of it, like here, because we've never really talked, like, what's it like working with me? But I want right. to hear that, even if it's brutal, I want to know. Well, the thing about uh, working with you. Don't be too nice. I don't want it to be like, you no, know. No, no, no. I'm going to be, I'm going to say how I feel, um, is that. You know, you are the director. So uh, the job, I think, of the actor uh, is to bring you ideas. You know, whether you like those ideas or not, that's irrelevant in a sense. But um, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, that's that's the job. You know, and and um, I have for for me, you know, 
it's not like you don't let me try things. You let me try things. Now, if that fits with the story or not, then we do it or we don't do it, you know, but it's also for me to kind of learn how to work with you to execute what it is that we're trying to execute, you know, like, yes, there is the idea of like, I want to, I'm trying to interpret the script and hopefully bring something to it. Uh, and then you direct that to get the best performance out to serve the story. Because essentially, we're trying to serve the story, you know, you and me. Um, but, uh, you know, sometimes, of course, like, you know, we'll get on <laughs> each other's nerves in a sense. But, uh, you know, I, I think that we've always kind of worked well together because it's a give and take. You know, I, I'll, I will give you what I can give you and you give me what you can give me. Because the thing is, we're both learning, but at the same time, I'm learning a little bit from you because you're, you know more about this stuff than I do, more experience than me, and you have already the vision for the story. I can do my interpretation, but it doesn't mean that it's, it fits with, with that. And I think that's one of the things that I've kind of a little bit more understood lately is that, um, yes, it's about being good at what you do and good at what I do, but it's also like, hey, does this fit with the story? Yeah, you know, and if we are gonna tell a story, I'm telling a story. You're telling a story. If it fits, it fits. If it doesn't fit, there is no hard feelings. At least not between <laughs> between us. Yeah, you know. So it's been an experience for me to learn. Uh, sometimes uh, I'll feel uncomfortable to like ask for another take uh, because I don't want to waste time. Uh, or, or but but like more lately, more recently, I've gotten more comfortable to like, hey, can I do another take? Yeah. Because at the same time, I, I think that uh, as I'm learning to kind of like, you know, try to understand what my role is, my role is to ask you for another take. I That's what I'm supposed to do. If I feel that I didn't give my best, then I should ask for another take. If I want to try something, then I should, because that gives you then on the back end of the of, of uh, cutting it together, editing it together, gives you more options. Yeah. And then, and that's essentially the job. You know, yeah. um, so that it's been, it's sometimes, you, you know, we get frustrated. Sometimes we get tired and that's normal because shoot days are long. Yeah. But it doesn't take away from the, like the positives or the, or like doesn't stop the workflow in any sense, at least for me. Uh, I think that I've ha tried to help even if I'm not acting, I try to help around the, the thing because I want to make it also happen, you know, uh, but the acting is where kind of, all right, now it's time to do the thing, yeah. you know? Um, so recently I've kind of tried my hand with acting in my own little yeah. things um, just to like, because like a large part of directing, of course, is the is acting. I mean, that's, and so I think, and I started to realize, of course, I always known how much control a director has over the film, but I never knew how much, I never know, so because I'm also the DP in charge of the camera, yeah. which is not normally the way it works, but we're low budget and still yeah. learning. And so, which I didn't know. I yeah. thought the director, that does yeah. what, yeah, that's directors what I thought. Directors should freaking know about yeah. what to do with the camera and where to put it. But, yeah. um, sometimes they don't, but, um, I, for the longest part, you know, my, my biggest self criticism, or like kind of like awakening was that creating a film that you're proud of, is so it goes through these layers you know like at first it was is everything look consistent because like sometimes you could take in my earlier films you could take so long shooting a scene the sun falls down the scene literally looks different from one shot to another yeah. um so I, for, so me being the director dp i'm like looking at the camera not necessarily immersed in the performance mm. and understanding how the edit's going to come together i'm just yeah. looking at the camera did he say the line and, and is it in focus yeah. and is it exposed and mm. is it going to cut together with the other thing right. to make us, is it going to make a scene rather than is it going to make an emotional experience from the scene? Yeah. So from your point of view, working with me, um, cause I do have a reference I'll bring up from other duties as assigned, mm. but from your point working with me, cause like when I'm doing my own things, I'll be like, wait, I know I got that, but I know I can do it better. Mm. When did it, the light switch with you that you're like, I know what he wants me to do and I didn't do it well that time. So I've got to let him know that I can do it better. Mm. When did that happen for you? Where you're like, where you're like, I didn't do a good enough job. When did mm. it turn the acting turn from, I've got to say the line mm. and hope that Jeff thinks it's good. And if he <laughs> says it's good, we move on versus like, wait, mm. I know I can do better. Um, I think that probably was throughout. I've had that idea of like, Hey, maybe I should say something. Um, 
even from the beginning from like from stash like i remember sitting after stash thinking oh man i could have delivered that line so much better but by that time we were already done it was the next <laughs> day you know um but i think um uh, on uh, on james and jer i felt i felt that i kind of had a, a grasp on who jer or now vince uh was in that moment during that scene and what he was going through and i was like okay this is i can perform now like it's it was a little bit more because i knew the lines and there weren't that many but i knew them and and now i was almost freed to really focus on the emotional core and the the lines were just uh, the kind of almost like a um uh, not the most significant part of it you know what i mean because i had them i had them good and then uh for the last scene of it when i had to go a little bit to another room to kind of make sure that i go through the lines correctly and all the different uh all the different like parts of it but um on other duties as a sign i think that's when i was ready to be like listen i know everybody's tired i know we've been going at this for a long time but can i please do one more thing yeah i wanted to give you props for that i wanted to tell that story um and then you can tell me like what was going through your head at the moment because um at that point we had worked together and you'd been the star of like all the short films in a row and so when we came together, this is the most recent one we've made besides like some of these micro shorts that I don't mm. even know are shorts. They're almost just like scenes, like the, mis the future missing million ones. Like uh, um, I didn't even put it in my um, short film list, which I think it is like the one with, Jay with uh, Jason. Oh, Jason. Mm. Um, but on other duties as assigned, Adrian was a star mm. and uh, Miranda was in it. And then Shelby's dad, Rick, was... He, uh, he was also a very big but, star. And so you had one role. And it mm. was beautiful. For me, it was like this like cameo that I, I was hoping that everyone who had watched our films over the years knows that you're so big in all of our stuff that <laughs> when they see, it's like one scene. Mm. And it's only a couple shots, really one angle, one mm. setup, um, you know, a couple lines. Mm. By this point, you know, you had gotten so good at, at acting that you nailed it two times in a row. Cause we, I, that's what we normally do. Get two for safety mm -hmm. where I was like, we've got it, you know, yeah. we're, we're good. Let's move on. And you mm -hmm. had waited all day for that moment to act. <laughs> yeah. And it literally only lasted, you know, maybe yeah. the 45 minutes to get the lighting set up and the yeah. production design and the blood. And then literally five minutes of the shooting. And yeah. then you said, wait, let me try it one more time. <laughs> yes. And you like kind of said your line and you had like, um, I forgot what was in your uh, hand. I, I, scissors yeah scissors and you yeah. wiped your face with it like yeah. just getting a little bit more business into that's what they call it, acting yeah. business yeah. into yeah. the into the uh <laughs> scene and um that's the one that made it in the film and that was you saying i was like all right we got it let's move on yeah. and then uh you kind of yeah okay but from my perspective it was not like that at all um because um like for example in in during the day when we were you know writing and and you know or, or you know we were trying to put it together um, the role was supposed to be longer. You know, we were supposed to take the body and do the thing. And then obviously it got smaller. And of course I didn't like that. <laughs> but, um, but it was, you know, it's, that's how it happens sometimes in that, in the movie business. Uh, <laughs> in, <laughs> the, in, the, in the Goldie Beacon movie business. In the Goldie Be <laughs> yeah. But um, yeah, so once it happened, once we were there, um, like, I didn't know that you felt that we got it. I just thought that because everybody was tired and it was long and we had, you know, it was 1130 at night already. It was like, all right, you know, that's, it's fine. Let's just, we, we got two takes. We're good to go. Let's just go, to, you know, let's just finish it out. Um, but in my mind, when, I, when we did the first two takes, I was like, oh, man, because I had decided, okay, this, I'm going to do this, look down, look up, bring the body, uh, and then wipe the wipe my face with the with the scissors, um, but I didn't do it on the second take, and I was so upset with myself. So I said, "Can we please do another one?" And the way I said, I almost said it quietly because I still wasn't a hundred percent confident to like ask for like, "Hey, let me do another one." What was my response? Your response was. Uh, you, I don't think you say, I don't remember you saying anything. You just set up the thing again and said, all right, da, 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 <laughs> and sound. Because I don't think you wanted to do another one. You were just like, let's just get this I over. was like looking out of that office because <laughs> like, it was an empty office in, yeah. um, where, um, 
finance, not financially, where the advisors are. Yeah. And I remember looking out and like people are like passed out. Yeah. <laughs> and it's after like literally the 48 hours are like 14, 16 hour shoot days. So yeah. we're on like, which is ridiculous. And we're on like the 14th yeah. hour at the time. Uh-huh. I'm promising people, hey, we've gotten so good. We're going to shoot this in 10. Yeah. Here we are at hour 14. <laughs> we've still got a scene left. So yeah. I'm like, all right, let's move on. But no, we, yeah. we did it. And yeah, it was good. Yeah. And we use that. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Damn, I didn't even think about that. Um, yeah, the air condition. He said the air conditioning didn't work, so it got hot. Um, yeah. That's funny. Maybe somebody turned it off. We've done that a couple of times, like this one. Um, yeah, rip that out of the wall. <laughs> um, okay, so, so, yeah, so the we got robbed. I'm going to say that outright. I believe so, yeah. For, at the 48-hour film project. I mean, that one was one of our most polished films and I was really proud of it and we got robbed but who who cares whatever it was a great experience and it was really good to blend that was last year what last summer summer yeah and we blended Thanks. again the kickback crew with the lightning studio crew brought back some some Shelby Dre um yeah. you know people who worked on our films made some new friends Colin was clutch on yeah. that uh Matt yeah uh collaborated with the Rowan film pro- film program that's yeah. so funny that the Rowan film program Came here. Well, students were coming here. Yeah. Then we did one which um, stemmed from Adrian. Mm-hmm. Adrian's idea to do a static shock inspired short film. Mm-hmm. And he came out to me and so we collaborated on like a, a new type of vision for it inspired by, mm-hmm. you know, the boys. And um, he brought so much energy to it and so much of the, you know, the creativity and uh, as well the crew. But it was ironic because we called it Volt. And it's like kind of like lightning it's not lightning but it's like mm. it's like a goldie beacom superhero <laughs> that's yeah. what it is when i look back on it, it's filmed on campus back yeah. in the alley uh, in between the before you enter the esports area mm-hmm. um and it's a goldie beacom superhero you got punched in the face there what was that like uh it was fun to do like an action thing um because uh you know, I've never done it before. I mean, it wasn't too complicated. I I punch him, he punches me, and that that was basically it. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it was cool. Uh, I we didn't like touch each other at all, but we I I think we solved it because I remember when you showed um, Jeremy the the thing. He as soon as like I I I pretend to punch Adrian and then Adrian pretends to punch me. He looks at me. He's like, oh, that that was that looked like real. Yeah. And so that I was proud of that for sure. It yeah. was a good it was a good time. We got to meet new people. So. Yeah. And you opened the film just crushing Joe. Yeah. Who yeah. Yeah. Like helped him up with the story <laughs> on that too. So it's like the writer getting beaten. Yeah. Yeah. Joe um, Joe was a good sport because I really I think I ripped his shirt. I think he yeah. had to take another shirt. <laughs> but yeah. He was yeah. In, he was in it. He was good. So we do have one more coming out in a couple of weeks here called Greg's Gonna Blow Up, oh, um, yeah. which we'll share that when it comes out. But yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, I wanted to like, I wanted to get in more on like our relationship with it and some of the yeah. experiences you had. Um, and if there's ever been times where you're like, man, I just, man, can I, I want to be the director. Because <laughs> I always wonder, you know, I know yeah. like, because. Of all the films we've made, I've always been the director, mm-hmm. you know, and I always wonder if some people are like, I want to be the director, but like <laughs> it comes with a lot of responsibility. It's not yeah. just, you know, you're not just throwing out ideas. You're mm. literally responsible for taking the idea, finishing it. Mm. And if you don't ha- know how to do it, if you don't know how to shoot, if you, if you're trying to get into film and you want to be a filmmaker and you don't know how to write, shoot or edit, you can't, I don't think in this day and age you can really direct. I mean, unless somebody, you've got a lot of money, you know, nepotism, um, you're a nepo baby, but, uh, you know, yeah. Mm. Well, it's, it's like you said before, when you were trying to just focus on, hey, was the lighting good? Did the sun go down? Did the shade change? Mm-hmm. Uh, is the guy in focus? Is the girl in focus? Are they saying the line? Did we get it? Um, I think that that's what kind of we've been talking about, where if you don't have the, the, um, the toolbox ready to go, then how are you going to get the thing? So how can you yeah. get to performance if you don't have these things already down pat, you know? Yeah. So getting those down pat and then going to the next one, like I tried to do like a, a, 
a small thing with where but i wasn't even actually filming it i just told my girlfriend like hey keep the camera on me try to you know and then i and then once it, i was filming her and it was just kind of shots thrown together but i got to experience a little bit hands-on what it means what you say we're taking from idea to execution and how it can change from your original idea yeah you know but that the idea comes with like a responsibility of like okay how can i really get this to get from the abstract to something concrete that's in front of me that then i can kind of put together and hopefully yeah. make sense to whoever sees it but really that doesn't matter as long as it makes sense to me like my friend saw it and he was like yeah it looks cool but like i don't understand the point of it and i'm yeah. like well i understand the point of it and that that's the only thing that yeah. really matters you know in that really but but that also means that i need to improve how i'm communicating it you know yeah even if i'm just communicating to myself i need to communicate it better yeah i've had a friend that i've worked with on films the whole time you know um who has this idea that uh because it doesn't turn out to be what you imagined mm -hmm. you know it's not good enough and i've learned over the period of time and especially listening to great filmmakers talk it's like that's how it always will be you mm. could be the you could be martin scorsese mm. and um the film is not going to be what you imagined it to be yeah. sometimes it could completely shift into something else and it's mm. hard to deal with like i remember <laughs> aaron will like this because i remember when i showed the rough cut of assimilation because you know sound plays such a huge role but when you throw together the rough cut um, it looks so bad. Like even Scorsese said, like if you don't throw up watching your rough cut, you know, you've got no, uh, you know, you didn't do it right or whatever. So I remember showing Aaron the assimilation rough cut mm -hmm. before there was color, before there was sound, mm -hmm. music, um, and everything was fine tuned. And he's like, so do we just forget about it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I'm like, no, like it becomes something else. You have to look at it. What, what, you, you've written something. Mm -hmm. You do your best to film what you you wrote. You then you look at your film that you shot, and you're like, "This sucks. This is not at all what I thought it could be." You get closer and closer as you get more experience. But then, it's your job then that it, it could be so defeating to look at that in the edit and be like, "Wow, that." And then you have to literally, especially if you're doing the edit yourself, it's always refreshing to have somebody with you because with fresh eyes. Yeah. But a lot of times, I'm I've been doing the editing myself, and you walk, you look at that and you say, "How in the world am I gonna?" save this it can be so defeating but then it gets to a point where it becomes if you let it which i've been very hard at letting it you know ego has gotten in the way of of me um that's not mine um but yeah ego has gotten in the way of me uh i thought it was harry's again no, no, no. <laughs> set an alarm during the podcast uh <laughs> But ego has gotten in the way of me letting the films and letting everything become what it's supposed to become. I mean, that's where I'm at right now with The Missing Million is, is in July, September 2021, I wrote a feature script just to write it. You know, wasn't expecting to shoot it. And then I was like, all right, we're going we're gonna to actually shoot this. But now I'm like still married to the original idea. Mm. But now that you have to put locations to it, you've got to put actual people to the cast. You've got to put, you've got to fix the story, make it better. You've got to come to terms with the fact that what you wrote is just a draft. It's not going to be the thing. And, and as soon as you shoot it, that's dead. It becomes something else. You've got to find it something else. And so, um, but that's the beautiful part because you get to a certain point when you've got the film finished where you know, s some surprises can come along the way um, mm. that really turn it into something else. Yeah. I mean, I remember you telling me that um, a movie goes through different stages, right? You write it, it's one thing. You film it, it's one thing. You edit it, it's another thing, right? Yeah. So, mm. and, and for that last thing to be, to live, the other two, like you said, have to kind of die. <laughs> uh, but all three are a different experience and they are fulfilling in their own sense you know you sitting down and 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 consistently writing to put a whole screenplay together is not easy you know and uh and then to get to the part where okay now locations now this like you're building a world you yeah. know but in any endeavor where you have to build something 
it does go through those stages you know like i can think of a drawing that i want to do and then oh but then when i actually do it it's not how it was in my head but you have to kind of accept that or yeah. try to kind of h however you do it to really to really make sure that you are loyal to the vision that you had but it's also a responsibility and a difficulty to figure out how do you then really do that? How do you translate it yeah. to, to pen and paper or to the screen? Well, first to the pen and paper and then to the screen. Um, but then also with, with the movie, with the actors, if I come in and do something that you don't like or you think like, whoa, this is different than I had imagined, maybe you're like, well, you know, that's fine. That's, it may work in the story. It may not. Yeah. You know, um, so I it's important to kind of uh, to communicate what the story really is. Yeah. But then again, with the actor director thing, I interpret it in, 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 in a way you interpret it in another way. Like uh, from hearing interviews from actors, some actors say, oh, yeah, this director is very specific. He wants you to deliver the lines exactly this way. He wants you to do the movements exactly this way because that's what they have in their mind. He even wants you to put your hand down on the table in a certain way. Mm -hmm. Other directors are a little bit more like, yeah, do this and that, but do it how you feel comfortable doing it. Because at the end of the day, yes, you are the director, but we are telling the story together in a sense. Mm -hmm. And that can be difficult to kind of give up that control almost of like, yes, you as the actor or you as the editor are also telling the story of this thing that I have in my mind, yeah. you know. Uh, but it doesn't have to feel like I'm giving up something. It can uh, instead be I'm bringing you into something, you know. And that can be a good, a beautiful thing. Yeah, a great analogy that I've heard about filmmaking and just art in general um, is I follow Ryan Booth on Instagram. He's an inspiration. Of, he's a director. Um, and he makes the, I'm sure many other people make the analogy as well, it's like surfing. It's like being in the water, you know? Like, if you try to fight the waves, then you're gonna drown. You're gonna, if you try to impress your own vision and be like, you know, the auteur theory and mm. try to like just make it all the way you wanna make it, which I've learned my own way. And you crash and you make shitty movies and they just are that way. And I've learned that the hard way. But if you adjust, try to ride the wave, you know, you catch one, understood like like you have been that for me it's like when, when I started to see you were really interested in this it's like okay let's collaborate together see how we can grow mm -hmm. and um the the great ending to that is that the only thing you can control is staying in the water you know yeah. continuing to try to, to try to catch those waves but um before we close it out I really want to get into I really want you to say like you know, come on, throw it at me, criticize. Where's the, you know, how, do, how, how, come on, like any stories where it's like, man, really went home, like, damn it, I never want to work with Jeff again. <laughs> Screw that guy. You know, I'm about to make my own movie. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if I have any of those. Better got to make one up. Um, I do remember at some point, although you are always encouraging with me. Uh, I remember that when we were doing the up the ladder, I remember wanting to like kind of be the the main guy of it, right? And but then I was like, okay, maybe, but this is a better opportunity to play the two roles, right? But I remember, I don't know. I think you said to me like, ah, I don't think they think, or maybe I don't think that you can do both roles or something like that. <laughs> but um, I was like, no, I can do. It. And that's when I got a little bit like, no, I can do both roles. I can play the two different guys. Well, I yeah. always knew you could play the two different yeah. guys. That was me saying yeah. you could do that. But what I didn't think you could do was yeah. play the office guy, uh, okay. which was the main character. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, because yeah. I just could never see you. That's just casting. Yeah. I could just never see you in yeah. an office job. Yeah. I just couldn't. And I stand by that. <laughs> but, um, but that was an easy yeah. one. Come on, hit me with something. Um, we well, might have to think. Senny might have to throw one in here. Senny, where have I been like? How about the last one? <laughs> the Super Bowl? The Super Bowl ad? Or? When you guys were like in the office just repeating. <laughs> Which one was that? Super Bowl ad. Oh, the Super Bowl ad? Yeah. Um, Do it this way. Because I started to get, like, specific about what I wanted. Mm. You know, recently I think I've gotten, you know, like, it, you really leaning into, like, I think visually, so really mm. leaning into, like, this is what I want. Mm. I used to be a little bit more nervous about, like, oh, mm. it's in focus, it's lit well. Yeah. But then when that stuff starts to come secondhand. 
I think in the latest one, that's when I realized a little bit more, well, I don't have control over my body when I'm in the scene. You know what I mean? Because it's very specific, especially in with the camera. It's because it's not theater. You're not far away. You're you're like you're up close. So you see the eye movement. You see the twitch. You see the and if those are not under control and are are specifically pre pre uh, you know I mean yes there is some sort of um, spontaneity to it sure but and creation but you have to kind of have the steps down to then be able to throw them away like we said before to be able to create something and I felt in those moments that I didn't have it and I you know we were shooting the whole day I, I was very tired. But not that that's an excuse, but uh, just that I hadn't been practicing. I hadn't been practicing my, the eye thing. I hadn't been practicing, you know, and, and I just felt like, you know, you were right in telling me, hey, listen, like, you got to, I want you to do it a certain way and you're not doing it right now. Um, so it was for me, it was like, I got to look at myself and be like, I need to be practicing when, when we're not doing stuff yeah. so that when we do, it's an opportunity to then I you know it can really be good because um, because I've been practicing. But if I don't practice, then what's the what's the point? Because it's like a sport, you know, it's a 100%. muscle. It's, it's a like sport. a muscle that you build. Because yes. I've noticed and I've learned that with my own acting and my own these, these little cheesy shorts I'm making. Like I'm like, oh wait, I gotta be a little bit more patient with the actors on set because mm. it is a lot harder to take a deep breath, especially when there's a bunch of people around, the lights are on you, the camera's on you, and I, and I, if I'm not always empathetic to what you're going through, the actor's going through, and I'm more like, we gotta get this shot because we gotta get the next set up, mm -hmm. we need the reverse, we need the insert here, mm -hmm. this is gonna cut together with this. Um, if I'm not like, you know, more empathetic to what the actor is feeling mm -hmm. in the very moment, the person, not what the character's supposed to, because mm -hmm. the person is the one bringing that out. Yeah. Um, then yeah. yeah it can be sometimes a little bit like because it's the process of it can be a little bit like well now we gotta wait a while or now we gotta rush over to this other thing so that it when and I, I still today like I'm not always used to it you know um, sometimes you can, it can be uncomfortable to do the you know the process of it is a little bit difficult uh, and then you, okay, now you got to perform. So training that on my own, practicing it, reading monologues, that's very important. Because otherwise when push comes to shove, let's say, it's you d you don't swim, you start sinking. And, sink. yeah. and that's how I felt in the latest one, for example. But it turned out well together, um, the whole thing. But for my own thing, it was like, hey, I need to be practicing much more. Yeah. I need to be much more focused so that once the time does show up, it can be it can be there you know and uh so yeah that's i think for me has been the good thing in, in that sense but stories about <laughs> like things like that I, the only time i can think of is uh, is the one with the other duties as a science where you know i've been practicing the whole day i'm thinking the about the lines and then it doesn't happen but then it, it's the yeah. thing is in that that moment is the moment where okay you ask because that after Afterwards, the lesson is, okay, what was the lesson from this specific one? Was you've been practicing and now you've built up the, the confidence to ask for another take. Yeah. And to then actually in the take, do the things that you plan to do so that when you go home, you're not like, oh man, I wish I could go back and do it again. Yeah. You know, and that's... You left it all out there. Left it all. Just, and yeah. that's the beautiful thing. I've always felt the connection between film and sports, mm -hmm. you know, and... um you're giving so much more of yourself there. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I really noticed that in, in other duties as assigned with you that you that you had gotten to a point where you could take in the script, bring more to bring something else that even wasn't in the script. Those little things you did. And that's what was so good about Adrian too. Is that's why like when you look at if you if anyone wants to look at uh, how to break a leg versus Hari and Adrian and how to break a leg versus Hari and Adrian in other duties as assigned. Mm -hmm. I think you see those are about a year apart and I think you see a year's worth of growth from you from learning how to become an actor, sure. you know, and it, it was cool that it's kind of, we've seen that over the years and that kind of rounds it out to like, I'm in no position to give any type of real <laughs> advice, but maybe to somebody just starting. Um, and so if you've wondered like, why are you at Goldie Beacom? Mm. You know, you want to be a filmmaker. Um, it's because Goldie has allowed me to make these films. Yeah. And the best way to learn 
is by making films. You know, you could watch all the ones you want. You can even write everything you want, but until mm -hmm. you pick up a camera and put the, put the pieces together, learn how to shoot, learn how to edit, learn how to bring an idea to life. Um, and that just speaks to the, the, uh, the college itself, mm -hmm. you know, that's what's good about college is, you know, you get this opportunity to meet like-minded people mm -hmm. that elevate you to another level. Um, and you learn and all that's culminating in, you know, of course I can always, I can make short films for the rest of my life, but we have set our sights on making a feature film because no one's ever going to hire you. No one's ever going to give you the opportunity to make a feature unless you create it yourself. Mm -hmm. And that's the missing million for us. And so mm -hmm. if you've ever been a fan of the lightning studio stuff, the kickback stuff, everything that I've ever done, um, every documentary, every film, every video, every photo, it's all been to become a better storyteller, to make um, a feature film and make it in that area. And, mm -hmm. and of course make it with, other people and so um so that's definitely in our future within the year or so so i've never really said that on this but follow us you know <laughs> follow us like subscribe like and subscribe like and subscribe. on uh and say again. yeah and watch the movies yeah. you know thanks sunny sunny's good, good <laughs> at being like yo you need to get yourself out there um but yeah so we'll have we'll have another one to share in a couple of weeks i'm excited about that one um but, uh, but yeah, uh, yeah. And then missing million in a year or so whenever we can, that's another, whenever we can raise the money or just do it with no money, no money, but yeah, Run and gun. anything else that you wanted to add? Uh, no, I'm good. Yeah. I mean, I wanted to talk about something, but we yeah. are already talk about it. Well, sometimes, uh, when y you reach a certain point, you feel like, well, I should have figured out things by now. I should have yeah. been somewhere. And when you realize that you are not, when you're 18, maybe that's okay because you're still 18. But once you get to 23, 24, 25, or 30, yeah. or 30, you know, you may feel a certain, but that's the game. It's kind of the, it's the game of, it's the test, the test of, hey, you think you should be somewhere. You think something, but that does not mean that it's the truth. And being brave enough to say, okay, no problem. We will do it, no problem. We will figure it out. And pushing forward against that feeling of, oh, I should have figured. You know, it's like being a freshman in college. You come, you become, you, you're a freshman in college, and once you become a senior, you're like, you know, I'm a senior now, I got it all figured out. But then you got to now go on to life and be a freshman again in a sense. And each stage of your life, each stage of each, maybe a new job, maybe a new situation, new opportunity, um, you gotta be a freshman again in a sense. And that can feel like, well, what yeah. was the progress for uh, at, at all? It's, my father says it like this, you are here, you go to the top of this place, and then you go to, let's say, the bottom of somewhere else, but yeah. it's a little bit higher. That's yeah. what you have to remember and yeah. kind of keep yourself to kind of keep yourself as a, a, a freshman, let's say, because then you can learn the most. Yeah. But you got to stay moving to be able to, to, to do those things and to take those steps upwards. Uh, or even if they are down, that's fine. But you are, l you are learning. You are not saying, well, you know, you're not letting the ego kind of get the better of you where like, well, I should know this by now or I am or I already know it and not accept that maybe you don't know something or that yeah. there's some more to learn. You know, and I, I feel that in myself sometimes, like, well, shouldn't I have it figured out by now? No, I shouldn't. And when I do, it's the right time to do it. And it's not right now, and that's yeah. fine. But it's uncomfortable, of course. Yeah, that's such beautiful perspective because it's the voice in your head that's telling you you should, which is the good voice, but also the bad voice. You know, the one that says you're destined to do it, but also you should be better. So it's like, go, you know, go do it. And, um, but at the same time, it's like, you know, it, it helps you become, you get there eventually, mm. you know, but yeah, that's such, um, yeah, you can cut it. it's okay. no, that's going to stay in for sure. Um, but what about your Polaroid of the day? Polaroid of the day. Yes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> We're going to grab one off the wall and it is. Oh, wow. That sound is awful. 
I'm gonna take double feature. It's a thing now, the double feature. Um, so one of them is Kiara, uh, our RA, uh, writing, uh, don't forget to smile, and then a smiley face, uh, and we'll, we'll get it for the camera. And then this one, I wanted it for the quote. Uh, it says, reach for the stars and surpass your limits. And <laughs> you have an owl in your hand. From, from oh, yeah. um, up the ladder. Up the ladder, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I up didn't mean to distract you. No, 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 you're this. good, you're good. I was going to say bye with him. <laughs> Is it a him or a her? We don't know. We got it from the thrift shop. It's a, it's a very cool looking owl. I remember when we were moving it around on the set of yeah. up the ladder. <laughs> Yeah, it's like Twin Peaks inspired. That was yeah, the yeah. vibe behind that. But wait, it says, one of them said, reach for the stars. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> be careful. Almost died, dude. <laughs> He's stuck now. It um, says, uh, reach for the stars and surpass your limits. Yes. So, you know. I thought it's reach for the stars and if you miss, you land among the moon. No, that's the, the generic one the, or the one that, you know, people know. This one was, I guess, an original from, from this guy. I like that. I like uh, that. But yeah, and don't forget to smile always. Um, no, it's reach for the moon. If you miss, you land among the stars. No, you land among the clouds. Because the clouds <laughs> are here. The moon is up there. Oh. The moon is the star, isn't it? That's, what oh. I, I, that's how I've heard it. <laughs> Who's right? Who's wrong? I don't know. Tell us in the how comments. How much money you want to bet? Uh, I have about $5. I could bet. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have bet in. <laughs> Uh, yeah go ahead uh, but yeah so yeah don't forget to smile and reach for the stars and surpass your limits well this has been this, is, yeah. this has been interesting yeah this has been interesting <laughs> this has been good oh uh, yeah let us know if you don't like the specialized episode about about certain things how could you not I don't care if you don't nobody watches anyways <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm gonna watch this one yeah. <laughs> I'm when I edit it, it. <laughs> Yeah. Right. It um, is an editor's and director's medium. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but all right. Thank you. See ya. See ya.